Dyslexia. What is dyslexia? How many definitions of dyslexia are there? Well, everyone thinks they know the answer to that, but when you actually get them to commit themselves to it, it's not quite as easy as we think. But there is actually fairly good logic, and we go through it fairly easily. But let's start with Lewis Carroll. Humpty Dumpty said, when I use a word, it means just what I choose it to mean. Neither more nor less. The question is, said Alice, whether you can make words mean different things. The question is, said Humpty Dumpty, which is to be the master? That is all. In other words, if I tell you what the definition of dyslexia is, why should you believe me? What about the British Psychological Society? Or the American NICHD or IDA? British Dyslexia Association? The European Dyslexia Association? Or even the Health Council of the Netherlands? Who should you believe and why? It's up to you which you believe. But let's have a look at some of the logic, shall we? What is a definition? Well, quite simply, think of a definition as a balance. A balance between usually a single word on one side and a collection of words on the other. And if that single word can replace that collection of words, then we have a perfect balance between the two. So we have our definition on one side and our collection of words on the other side. Now, if we look at something, something simple to define, like a, a square, shall we? How do we define a square? What are the characteristics? Well, it's quite simple. All we need is to have four sides. Sides need to be equal, 90 degrees at the corners, and closed. So, we can have a good balance. We can have a square on one side, and we can have our collection of words on the other. Square, an object that has four sides of equal length, corners each of 90 degrees, and closed. Absolutely perfect balance, no problem. Now the question is, can we do the same with dyslexia? Well, before we do that, let's think about games a moment. We use the word games all the time. But how can we say exactly what a game is? Because there's lots of different games. We can think of playing rugby, cricket, card games, ring a ring of roses. All of them are very, very different. And in fact, if we go back to Wittgenstein, Wittgenstein said not about a single collection of characteristics, but more of a, like a family resemblance. And it's, this is what dyslexia really is. It's a family resemblance. So there are lots of different characteristics, but no defining characteristic. So if we look, for example, at a collection of dyslexics, you could find that some have one problem, some have another, but all of them are different. This is why when we're talking about the dyslexic individual, we have to remember that every single dyslexic is different. Now, if we then look at dyslexia, the question is, can we get that balance? Can we find a collection of words that can replace that single word? And I say, yes, we can. Now, the definition I will use, the one I will tell you here, is that dyslexia is a difficulty in the acquisition of accurate and or fluent word reading, spelling and writing that's neurological in origin. Okay? Now, what I'm saying is that collection of words, long collection, is in perfect harmony with our single word. Okay, so we are totally in balance. Now, before I question that a little bit, let me add my own extension of that. Because that little definition is what we call a symptom definition. Reading and writing difficulty are symptoms. Now, some definitions are called causal definitions. And if we want to have a, a longer version, we can say that it may be caused by a combination of difficulties in auditory and visual processing, working memory, 
and analysis, synthesis, and storage in the orthographic and phonological lexica. The semantic and motor systems may also implicate it. So that's a whole series of causes. If you like, it's a, a working hypothesis. Seems to cover a lot of areas, but a lot of areas are involved in learning to read and write. And if we accept all the different cognitive skills we need for learning to read and write, we also have to accept that all of them could actually go wrong. So all of them could be a cause, which, by the way, also means when it comes to an assessment, we should also look at all those causes. Now, and this, if you like, is, is a punchline to this. The manifestation of dyslexia in any individual will depend upon not only individual cognitive differences, but also the language used. Put another way, dyslexia occurs in all languages. But the problems you have may be different in one language to that of another. Now, let us go back for a moment to that question of the balance. Remember, I said it was a difficulty in the acquisition? Now, I'll be honest, quite a few people have said to me, but Ian, you clearly do not understand the difficulties of the dyslexic individual. Because I have a lot of problems, even on your own checklist. You have other difficulties. Where does that fit in with left and right confusion? What about tying shoelaces? All those other problems. Ah, that is one of the reasons why I go back to basics and ask what are we trying to define. What we need to remember is that the dyslexic individual has all those difficulties. But that is the dyslexic individual and is not a definition of dyslexia. The point here is remember we mentioned all those underlying causes? For example, memory. Difficulty of remembering words, difficulty of remembering the phonological components. Those memory issues may also impact on things like remembering how to tie shoelaces, remembering left and right. So it's that single underlying difficulty does affect the reading and writing and does create problems for the dyslexic individual. But the question I am addressing, as I said at the beginning, is what is dyslexia? Now, if we take this a little further, we can also understand the other problems the dyslexic individual has. So, for example, the phonological skills is going to impact not only on reading, writing, but also note-taking, listening comprehension and time management. The orthographic skills affect those. The memory skills affect those. All those cognitive difficulties will have an impact on all those learning areas but also those life skills that are so fundamental to the difficulties of the dyslexic individual. And although I don't want to go into it here, it is the difficulties in those underlying cognitive skills that are also the problems behind, for example, dyspraxia. So a memory problem could be a problem for the dyslexic individual causing reading and writing difficulties, but will also impact on motor skills. So it's not surprising that there can be an overlap between, for example, dyslexia, dysgraphia and dyscalculia. So to sum up, according to me, dyslexia may be described as a difficulty in the acquisition of accurate and or fluent word reading, spelling and writing that is neurological in origin.